Senator Roberts. Thank you. <clears throat> Speaking as a servant to the people of Queensland and Australia, my Fair Work Amendment Equal Pay for Equal Work Bill 2022 was drafted in response to exploitation of casual coal miners in central Queensland and the Hunter Valley. It's since been widened. My bill was referred to the Education and Legislation Committee, Employment Committee for inquiry, and I thank the committee for organising a public hearing so miners could testify on their exploitation personally. The committee found there was a need for my bill, yet then recommended waiting for the government's version. Labor announced its hollow fair work for fair pay idea back in 2018, four years ago. Labor and the unions campaigned on their bill in the 2019 state election in New South Wales and the 2019 federal election. The problem is Labor's bill did not exist. I confirmed that and began drafting my bill in April 2021. Labor's bill was not introduced into parliament until December of 21, a month after my bill was completed and three years after Labor first promised it. If the Labor Party was serious about fixing this issue, their bill would have appeared in 2018, not three years later, four years later, after One Nation repeatedly called them out. Labor's bill was a dog's breakfast, so the government has chosen to start over. Now, I accept the government saying it's just started meeting with stakeholders, yet a briefing with the, Prime, with the minister's advisers last week reveals that consultation has only been with the companies and union bosses that perpetrated this scandal. <clears throat> The miners, air crew, ground crew and other workers ripped off for tens of millions of dollars in wages have not yet been consulted after six months, which of course means the Labor Party, the CFMEU and the industry are trying to find a way to keep these labour hire contracts going. I'll explain why in a minute. And so I'm advancing my bill, preparing for a vote early next year. I thank Senator, Senator Babette for allowing me to use his bill's time today. Early in my career, I spent three years in the Union as an underground coalface miner, including the Hunter and Queensland. My father was an underground coalface miner, senior executive and later Queensland Chief Inspector of Mines. He was awarded an Austra Order of Australia for eliminating black lung in our state's coal industry. Having completed an honours degree in engineering, I returned to manage coal mines involving daily interaction with the CFMEU and the Hunter and in Queensland. This issue is very personal to me because the CFMEU and its predecessor, the Miners' Federation, were once strong unions that looked after and served their members. The reports I received to my Senate office in 2019 from Queensland and the Hunter have shocked me. After visiting these areas repeatedly and listening with miners, I was no longer shocked. I am outraged, outraged at the injustice. The big picture is this. Labour hire companies were employing casuals in black coal industry production despite the award not allowing it. It was illegal. Exclusion of casuals extends beyond the black coal industry. It includes airline flight crew and other awards, which I'll speak to in a moment. Back to the black coal award. Casuals are excluded for a good reason. Coal mining can be dangerous. It requires training and constant skilling to improve productivity and, most importantly, for safety. Safety of an individual miner and safety of the whole mine and everyone in it. Underground miners typically retire ahead of most other industries when they can no longer do a miner's physical work. That's why proper unions like the old Miners' Federation negotiated high rates of pay. The modern award is much lower than negotiated rates because it assumes miners can be reskilled and redeployed into other industries after they exit from mining, allowing for a full working life. That's a fairy tale. That simply ignores the reality of life in the coal industry. Labor hire contracts are used to cut miners' wages. This represents a 40 per cent cut in wages against the pay a permanent miner earns in a mine's direct employ, doing the same job side by side. Two Australians working side by side doing the same job on the same shift, and one is getting 40 per cent less than the other. That is wrong. This has been going on for 10 years. Under the Hunter CFMEU, working with some mining companies and with protection from the local Labor members, Joel Fitzgibbon, and Dan, now Dan Rapicoli. Casual coal workers on labour hire contracts supposedly receive a loading for the, the loss of holiday and sick pay, yet their pay packets are still 40 per cent less. What caused this large reduction in pay, pay rate was not the absence of a loading, because that was supposedly paid. It was the very low base rate that the CFMEU installed. In 2021, One Nation supported the concept of not enabling workers paid for casual loading because that was paid. What we did 
was to ensure that workers retained their rights under industrial laws to take legal action for illegal pay rates. Yet the CFMEU then lied, shouting that one nation stopped workers from getting what was this. No! We upheld miners' rights to pay and entitlements while at the same time protecting small business from being forced to pay casual loading twice as some union bosses dishonestly demanded. It was the union that signed off on these enterprise agreements that robbed workers of 40 per cent of their pay. The Hunter CFMEU pocketed union dues from labour hire casuals and money from labour hire employers for dodgy enterprise agreements with low pay rates. It was the Hunter CFMEU that jointly directed coal long service leave funds that under accrued and avoided paying employer contributions to labour hire casuals. That I exposed and that a government review later confirmed me as correct. It was originally a Hunter CFMEU-owned labour hire company that collected fees from the, miners, from the mines for supplying labour under a labour hire contract. The CFMEU is clearly directing labour to protect their nice little earner, even at the expense of the workers the Hunter CFMEU supposedly pretends to represent. While hypocritically and deceitfully speaking badly of casual employment and casual workers, the committee report accurately describes the effects on communities of the reduction in local spending due to taking wages out of the community. I was lucky enough to find a lawyer who drew these agreements up on behalf of Hunter Labour Hire Companies and who has since seen the error of his ways. His advice informed my bill. Many exploited workers contributed to my bill. I have the most knowledgeable legal minds on labour hire contracts in the coal industry contributing to my bill, and I have generations of personal experience in the coal industry. What confuses my critics is that I'm not lining the IR club's pockets with overly complex, wishy-washy nonsense that opens more loopholes than it closes, as Labor's short-lived dog's breakfast did. My bill will fix this mess. My bill sets an additional provision for Fair Work Australia to require an enterprise agreement to pass before being approved. It allows an employee to appeal an existing enterprise agreement to Fair Work if an enterprise agreement breaches this new provision. The provision is simple. A worker on a labour hire contract must be paid the same rate of pay, including allowances, as a worker who is directly employed doing the same job on the same shift roster. That is clear. If the whole crew is labour hire, then the Commissioner must make a judgment on what the rate of pay should have been based on historical information and a comparison with similar minds or similar conditions. That is clear. The cost of using labour hire contractors will now fall on the employer rather than the worker. The intention is to require the employer to project their labour requirements, employ, train and nurture their people. You know, like employers used to. One complication is that some workers are on day shift and others on rotating shift. My bill takes that into consideration. Clause 3B of this bill expressly provides that the roster the employee is working must be considered in the assessment of equal pay for equal work. The committee report correctly identifies when labour hire contracts subvert the Black Coal Mining Industry Award 2010 and the Aircraft Cabin Crew Award 2020. I've circulated an amendment to this bill to include the Airline Operations Ground Staff Award 2020, which makes provisions for casuals that foreign companies bypass to exploit workers through labour hire contracts. I know Senator Sheldon is leading a fight against that exploitation. My bill will give him the ammunition to drag the whole situation back to fair work. I urge Senator Sheldon and Labor to adopt it. My bill's simplicity will prevent lawyers feasting because it allows fair work commissioners discretion to make value judgments. I reckon they're up to it. The remaining awards are excluded in the Fair Work Amendment, Equal Pay for Equal Work Bill 2022, as a line in the sand. While labour hire agreements are not being abused in these industries, explicitly including those awards in this legislation was designed to ensure labour hire firms do not treat these awards as a new profit centre once the opportunity for exploitation is removed from coal mining and aircraft operations. Witnesses who discussed the treatment under labour hire contracts were pleased to have the opportunity to publicly testify, and I thank the committee. These workers were not always afforded that opportunity. Stuart Bonds, from the Hunter listed case after case after case where miners have been employed under labour hire agreements with 40 per cent reduction in pay rate. More troubling were the stories of exploitation and victimisation these workers received, especially following a safety report or physical harm. Simon Turner testified to the committee on his inhuman experiences as an injured worker. He's one of many, sadly. 
Workers like Simon tried for years to get justice. The mine owner and the labour hire company completely ignored him, tossed him on the scrap heap. The Hunter CFMEU betrayed workers. Local Labor MPs let them down. Only when workers came to One Nation was progress made. Another worker on a labour hire contract saw a safety issue and reported it. Water trucks laying down too much water, creating slippery conditions. This worker was required to report that safety issue. Her contract was terminated the next week. There's no job security in labour hire contract arrangements. Workers injured at work were refused medical treatment and not paid workers' compensation or accident pay as legally required. Workers were afraid of reporting safety issues for fear of being sacked. Workers were rostered two years in advance to work 52 weeks of the year straight, no holidays. If you're working a full-time 12-hour shift and being given these shifts two years ahead, then you're not casual. You are a permanent worker. Despite being in effect permanent, these workers are unable to get home loans, car loans and provide a future for themselves and their families because banks won't lend to casual labour hire employees. When I say exploitation, I mean exploitation. All this happened with the Hunter CFMEU doing deals enabling mining companies more interested in profits than basic human decency. Labour hire deals and contracts are used to lower wages across an entire industry. Qantas pulled this stunt on their ground crew. It fired thousands of workers and re-employed them through labour hire co companies at the lowest rate of pay. What's a worker to do? Refuse the deal and have no job? Or take the deal and try to get by on 40 per cent less? Qantas are using these tricks on flight crew and pilots as well. Senator Sheldon can speak to this, so I won't. Correct loading on a plane is vital to flight safety and people on the ground. In my meeting with Qantas, their executives defended their behaviour as being necessary to maintain viability. Qantas have run their staff into the ground, cut their pay to the bone, moved staff from full-time secure jobs to casual junk jobs, worked staff on shifts with not enough time to recover, provided insufficient training and supervision, and now things are going wrong. What a surprise. And they belted loyal, long-serving employees with COVID injection mandates. One Nation's Fair Work Amendment, Equal Pay for Equal Work Bill 2022, remains the only legislation before Parliament designed to correct this unfair and dishonest corporate behaviour. It should have been in the government's Fair Work Legislation Amendment, Secure Jobs, Better Pay Bill 2022. But it's not. Yet it's not too late. Here it is. I'll now discuss specific topics in the committee report. Firstly, the bill does not act widely enough. My bill allows the minister to add more than the seven awards this bill currently covers using a disallowable instrument where exploitation occurs. It allows the minister to remove that listing should an industry stop exploiting. This is surely best practice. Only act where there's a problem and only for as long as the problem exists. Adding 700 plus awards, just in case, will needlessly add to the cost and complexity of our industrial relations system. Secondly, definitions of key concepts. The definitions enabled every submitter to correctly understand my bill's intent. Yet some of them went on to say the definitions were incomplete after correctly identifying the meaning of the words used. The wording was chosen carefully because once a term is given a specific meaning, that meaning is considered the term's full meaning. Cunning lawyers use detailed definitions to limit a term's application. This allows for deficiencies in definitions to be exploited as loopholes. I will not play the industrial relations club's game. It's up to the Fair Work Commissioner to decide if a labour hire agreement falls under this bill's provisions. Should the Fair Work Commission fail to honour this legislation's intent, then and only then should we wander into the legal minefield of definitions that become exclusionary rather than inclusionary. It's time to start using clear language, expressing clear principles and rely on the Fair Work Commissioner to exercise their wisdom and knowledge and to follow these principles in their judgments. My bill's intention and action. My bill provides a provision to existing provisions that enterprise agreements must pass to meet the Fair Work Commission's approval. This test is in section 321 of the Fair Work Act 20 of 2009 to show this equal pay for equal work provision is separate and additional to the better off overall test, the boot test. Section 321 is exactly where this provision belongs. In conclusion, the supposed downsides that some vested interests attribute in broad terms come from the same entities who turned industrial relations into a club for their own profit and power, at the workers' expense. These entities do very well from complexity. Workers pay the price in so many ways. This must stop. If the government is serious about equal pay for equal work, get on with it. I thank senators contributing to this debate and look forward to bringing this bill to a vote at the next opportunity.
Thank you, Mr. Deputy President. Uh, Senator Farrell was on the news.